So I thought we'd do a quick tutorial on instancing. Here I have a character that I'm making at the moment and I'd like to put a forearm guard on this character, but I'd like to put that guard on both arms and then adjust it to place. And while it's doing that, I'd like it to be an instance. So I already have an arm guard made. I can go into solo mode here so we can see it. This is it. Very simple piece of geometry. I'm going to press shift F so we can see exactly what that looks like. And you can see just how simple this is. I've intentionally kept it this simple. So if I hold down control and alt, I can drag over an area like this, and then I can kind of adjust this as needed. Uh, so I don't have to worry about too many polygons um, or polygons deforming badly for myself. So I literally have no loops in between each of these stages of this actual mesh here. I'm gonna go out of solo mode so we can have a look at our character again. This is what he looks like at the moment. This is our object in the center of the world and I'd like to place it in two different places here. So the way this actually happens is we have one object called arm guard. I'm just going to hold down shift and press this arrow to shoot it to the top so we can see what we're looking at. And you'll see if I go to macro, there underneath macros here, there's a macro that comes with ZBrush called create instance subtool. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna take our arm guard and then create a duplicate of it and use that as a nano mesh. So we'll go back to macro We'll hit the button this time, Great Instant Subtool. It'll take a couple of seconds and you can see it immediately comes up and says, okay, position the, the nano mesh poly to the ideal location and you can create duplicates using control and drag and activate edit mesh. So we'll just go over that very briefly. Basically, it's hidden our original object here. The arm guard is now hidden and it's created a new object here. This new object is actually a nano mesh. If we scroll down to the nano mesh here, you can see that this nano mesh, if I turn this off, it's just showing us a single polygon that it's created. What's actually happened is it made a single polygon and then drew our arm guard onto that polygon as a nano mesh. So if I turn this back on, we can see that. So that polygon is actually the placement polygon. So if we turn on show, pol show placement, we'll actually see that polygon. So I'll turn it off again. So with this, effectively, all we're working on is that one polygon. If we press W, and we scale this down, we're effectively just scaling down that single polygon, which happens to have an instance of this mesh on it. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna move it into place, scale it down. We can zoom in and basically place this roughly where we'd like it and at the scale that we'd like it. So let's say something like this. Now I can see that there are some issues with it protruding through the arm here. And this is why I wanted to do this. I wanted to see if this step is too much or not. You can see if I had to modify those points here, it would be awkward to get the right angle for it to be consistent and straight. So I have that one object now, um, but if I wanted to create another one for the other arm, effectively, remember if we turn on show placement, what we have is a single polygon. And in ZBrush, if you have any piece of geometry that doesn't have a subdivision, which this one doesn't. Go back to Nanomesh. Um, we can just hold down control and that will drag out an extra copy of that polygon and mask the original control. Every time we do that, we're gonna get a copy left behind. These are all instances then, effectively. This Nanomesh is the same on all of them. So if I, I'm just gonna undo that. I'm just gonna control drag once. I, we can actually turn off show placement. We don't need to see that polygon here. So I'm just gonna control and drag, and that will bring this one over here. And we can orient our gizmo any way we'd like uh, by just holding down Alt and locking that or resetting our gizmo if we want to. Alt and clicking, we'll do that. So I'm just holding Shift as I'm rotating around uh, my views just to kind of snap my view to something like where I want it. And if I want to modify my gizmo here, we can just hold down Alt and then we can modify the orientation of this uh, in a way that makes sense to us. So if I want to rotate this up here, I can do that. So let's say I'm happy with this placement and we have the same problem on this arm that intersecting the arm a little bit in, at one point. Uh, maybe I'll rotate it a little bit more like this. And using screen space, I'll just move it like that. Okay. So now that we have these two and they're both instances, we don't have our original, so how do we actually edit this? So 
That's the edit mesh button. So as soon as we hit this button, it's basically going to split the screen into two. And if I zoom in or out on one, it's going to zoom in or out on the other. And you can see now that as I'm uh, playing around with this one, we're going to see the effects on this one here. So for example, I have a problem here is that the step is too much. So I can go to a side view here. We can turn off perspective if we want, just to get an orthographic view. And holding down Control and Alt will mask everything except what's underneath my, my cursor. Now I can press W and move that out. Now you'll see as I move that out, I'll just undo it again. As I move it out, it's basically going to move out on both of these instances on the other side. So now we can actually determine, okay, this is actually intersecting his forearm. It's too big a step. This is kind of, this is all right. This is enough of a step for me to keep that and make it interesting. If I want to change this, I can hold down control and alt and you know decide how long or short these, these parts are. Uh, and you can see I had very few loops here and, there, and that was very intentional that if I had lots of loops in the middle here and I tried to make a selection, you know, they might not all follow along nicely but there's only one loop in between here. It's very, very easy to get straight shapes. Also, because now that we have this and I'm happy with the location, I can now edit this piece of geometry and the instances will update with it. So I can press my Z modeler brush or I'll press Q to go back to, to uh, the draw mode and press open up your Z modeler brush, BZM. And we can just insert loops now. I'll press Shift D to turn off dynamic mode, which I had turned on. Um, so we can insert loops and modify this geometry any way we see fit. So if I know I'm going to be carving detail on this later on, maybe this is an area that I'm going to need more loops in. Um, so I can add them in now. And I know that they're going to be added in to the uh, instances that we see over here as well. So that's pretty much it. One thing I would say is that we can press D to turn on dynamic mode here. D will toggle that on. We can say always yes. And you'll see that that updates here but it doesn't update in the viewport over here. So turning dynamic, toggling it on and off won't affect the nano mesh over here, which is a little bit unfortunate. And um, what we can do is we can go down to our nano mesh. Uh, we can go out of edit mesh mode once we're, we're done editing. And even now, if we press D, you'll see it will turn on the dynamic subdivision or it won't actually, but it will turn it on just for the polygon, not for, uh, not for the, the geometry that's on the polygon. So I'm going to press Shift D just to turn that off again. Um, and you'll see even just by turning on dynamic subdivision, even though show placement isn't turned on, it will toggle that on for you or effectively show it whether you want it or not. So Shift D will turn it back off again. So now that we have those uh, and we're happy with the placement and they, it's helped us determine the scale and the position and uh, any geometry changes that we want to make, how do we make it real? So there's two ways to do that, to convert these from instances into final pieces of geometry. One is to go down to the inventory and just hit one to mesh. And the other is to go to geometry and hit convert BPO to geo. Both of these will do the same thing. You'll see here, if I go to nano mesh, I'm happy with the results. I hit one to mesh. I go back up to my sub tool and you can see we now have one piece of uh, one sub tool here. Now, if I hit D, we would turn on dynamic subdivision for, for both of them. But I still want to get rid of this original polygon, but luckily enough, they share the same poly group. So we can just hit Control and Shift, click on that, click on it again, and it's hidden. To actually permanently delete it, we need to go into Modify Topology under Geometry and say Delete Hidden. That's it, we're now done. Um, we have our model. We can turn on or off dynamic subdivision as we see fit, or real subdivisions if we need to. But our instances serve the purpose and because of that, we can go back to our original object, which we now no longer need and just delete that. Hope this tip helps anyone else who's looking to do some instancing. And as ever, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. All right, bye.